Hey everybody, uh, for some reason the uh, recording device that we were using decided to skip some stuff, I don't know, so if it feels a little bit choppy towards the end or at one point, I really apologize. Hope you enjoy the episode, bye! Cool. Cool. Okay, that's good. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast, brought to you by Nobody. I didn't know. I was that's too be... soon. Too soon. Too soon. Oh, I, I didn't actually mean it that way. <laughs> what happened? Tell me what happened. So, so n- my... new development. We're not doing a live show, and we may not be able to do a live we'll show. We'll just do it on Facebook. Mm, yeah, or we can do it on the other Yeah, we can Instagram. trick out Twitch. Uh, oh, wait. First, I'm your host, G, and with me today are Vass and Anthony. It would be big facts, but now it's just big. Now it's just big uh, because something <laughs> had happened to the facts. Um, EF, which stands for Entertain Facts, the F word. Uh, the Entertain Facts part of it is uh, in limbo for now. Anthony, what happened? So, from my understanding... I have no idea what happened. <laughs> uh, 9.30 after, you know, like law class, I just went to my phone, said logged out of entertain facts. And usually this has happened before. So I just figured, you know, like some kind of glitch. So I go back and it said it didn't work. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. So then I check the accounts deleted. And I'm kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I kind of uh, been looking, I was looking online for ways to kind of like appeal it. Cause I want to at least give it a shot to appeal it. Yeah. It seems like a smart idea yeah. to do. So I figured from my understanding now, I believe that it was due to copyrights, which is stupid because you know, like it's under fair use and it shouldn't be like, I shouldn't got to leave for copyright. Mm-hmm. I was thinking it could be something I said or posted, but from my understanding, I didn't post anything really like controversial for a while. So I can't imagine it had to do something with me, like posting something wrong. I don't recall. Wait, like you didn't do anything naughty recently. Yeah. Was this like a, a last strike kind of thing? Is that why they wouldn't have given you any notice and just well, got rid of it? Well, they never give notice. never actually like say like you're on your last chance. Which is so weird. And the thing that annoys me the most too, because other people, like I was reading their stories, they never actually like specify what you did. They just said you violated community guidelines and that's it. Cool. So yeah. Okay. So to give some context to people, his Entertain Facts page started what, three years ago? October 10th, 2015. And you reach 72,000? 78,000. Almost 79. So an Instagram account with 78,000 followers was just gone. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Like, I mean, it's shitty. It's super shitty. Well, like, honestly, it's really cheesy, but, like, don't cry because it's over. Smell because it happened. Like, at least I can say I went out, like, at the top. Like, I didn't, like, my page didn't die because it just, like, died. Like, like a drop off of followers and stuff? Yeah. Just drop. Uh, if it happens again, it's good. If not, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. I was really, like, at, like it kind of, like, fizzled out for me, like, the enjoyment just because, like, people complain all the time. And it's just, like, it's such a nuisance to, like, find new content to post because there's like, over 2,000 posts of me, like, mm-hmm. at a certain time, you kind of, like, struggle to find stuff to post. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's, like, it's sad, but I'm not, like, that, like, heartbroken over it because if it happens again, it can happen. But I was really just using it, like, I learned a life skill, like, how to market online, mm-hmm. which is really, like, important nowadays, and I want to get into marketing. Yeah. So I know how to social media market. It's It'd be cool to have proof, but now it's gone. But you'd have, um, there's got to be a record somewhere, wouldn't it? Like, are all your posts just gone from- Oh, yeah. Done. Like, not even, like, the following count, not even the page. It's just, like- You would still have- photos and everything like that wouldn't you like let's say like at a point where you hit 70,000 and you had a screenshot or anything no. like that like you didn't know no, I didn't screenshot I screenshot almost everything I'm a screenshot junkie but uh I appealed it I have to wait like two to three days and they just say if they don't respond just kind of keep going at it and like yeah. eventually they should respond you should because that's a lot of work mm-hmm. but yeah no that's it pretty much now that's been happening a lot online um yeah. there's a big Facebook now has uh they've been for the past little bit uh deleting posts Mm -hmm. they recently deleted a crossfit nutrition thing and so crossfit's a huge community (laughs) and so they had put out something about certain nutritional facts that might go against other normal streamline main or mainstream sorry facts and facebook just deleted them for no reason there's been people's twitter's accounts that have been deleted because they didn't comply with whatever which seemed to be 
there's a trend that it seems to be leaning in a certain political way, like one side mm-hmm. versus another. And since then, there have been there's been a 15 million person drop on Facebook because and a bunch of major major companies have been pulling out. Like they just don't like from Playboy to Mozilla. Like they're just not on Facebook anymore. They've just deleted their whole thing. And I mean, I've always said that Facebook's on a decline. Yeah. And um, the unfortunate thing is that Instagram, Instagram's parent company now is Facebook or has been for a bit. And the guys that created Facebook or Instagram have pieced out like they kind of just gave it and then left. And they're probably going to work on something else. But Instagram still seems to be the one where people are, are going towards. And a lot of the people dropping off are young people, which is... Uh, they like Snapchat. Generation Z. I think they're calling them Generation Z. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. And they're kind of moving the trend away from the norm, which you, you know, just kind of... It's interesting to see how those things go. Like, they just move into something else, and the trend will then focus to them. Hmm. So, that is super shitty, though. Yeah. Um... Where do you guys want to start? Aside from that, how's the rest of your guys' week? It's been pretty good. I got a dollar raise at work. Ooh. Yes. One dollar. dollar. Tell them you quit and start your own business. Yeah. (laughs) Moving on up. Um, Okay. We've got... We're obviously going to talk about Game of Thrones finale. Yep. Uh, Next week's going to be interesting because we have a massive 15,000 person event going on. It's over the course of three days and... We and a few other people are the ones um, that are kind of or heavily too, involved, heavily involved in the away. back end and stuff. So next week's going to be interesting. I have thought about just uh, I've been writing up an editorial on TV finales, so I might just do a solo episode about just some finales that haven't been that people haven't liked. Like I might just come in here really quick and just just knock off an hour just to put something up. But I haven't decided yet because I want to make sure that it's good. I've been listening to. Uh, a podcast called Hardcore History. It's outstanding. And it w- I just listened to a six-parter, and each episode's about three and a half hours long. Hmm. Six-parter on World War One. It is unbelievable how little I un- I knew about World War One. Is it how- outside? Does it focus on, like, no, everyone? No, it focases on everybody. Like, y- you feel... The thing he talked about, and we're obviously not a, a history channel here, but just if you if you do like history, please, please, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History is is amazing. And he's unbiased in the sense that he has accounts from all sorts of people, both from the German side and from the Allies side. And you feel sympathetic for both sides because World War I was um, the way he described it and how most people have, have penned it as a war of attrition. And it all started with yeah. this very small act in uh, Sarajevo, and then it ended up escalating to what it was. And it was a war that people had no idea what it, what's going to happen with it. Mm-hmm. And it just escalated and escalated and introducing tanks and submarine warfare and biological warfare and all this stuff. Yeah. And he quotes both sides, both the German side. He quotes Mein Kampf, which mm-hmm. is Hitler's like big thing, which is a big yeah. no-no. But there's stuff in there that... Just to read it, just to know, like, I, I'm always of, a, of the mind of, if you don't, uh, and I got this from a friend of mine, he's not religious at all, but he's read the Quran, mm-hmm. and he's front to back, he's read the Bible, he's read everything, just to be a knowledgeable person. I don't know where I was going with this, but anyways, it's very good. The documentary, the, or the podcast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so anyways. <laughs> That's uh, where I, you're going. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I don't know how that got into whatever we were going to go to, but um, yeah, it's just been on my mind, and uh, again, I, I just it's know. it's related to the motion picture Wonder Woman. There you go. Entertaining facts. Well, I mean, there are some parts in, <laughs> in, in, in Wonder, Wonder Woman. Two. One. I was actually watching Wonder Woman last night. It was good. Still so good. That's one. That's uh, World War One. Um, okay. Dang. We're all, Again, like I said, so we're going to talk about the Game of Thrones finale, uh, mm-hmm. the much divisive. Uh, do you want to give your John Wick three oh, yes. review because you're the only one out of all of us that oh, has heard it? Yet. No, yeah. uh, it was awesome. Yeah. It was like it was fun, and you had the same feel a little bit. You had the other ones, but amped up. Like right. obviously, the kill count was way higher. We're talking like the both the first two films had combined around two hundred. This one on its own had two hundred plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Wick as as he always is a badass, and Halle Berry held her own very well. Nice, and the story is pretty great. How no it, spoilers, by no, the way. No, I know I'm, I'm staying away from spoilers, yeah, yeah. but the story is very good. How they progress, you delve into more of number one John Wick's past a little bit. Nice. Plus, 
more of the high table, of course, and the continental and all that stuff. It delves in very into it, right? Um, and then the ending basically leaves it open for a fourth, which is why we got that quick turnaround that fourth is green lit. I think yeah. regardless if they, whether how well it did, I think it was getting it. The fourth was already green lit as they were filming and probably get going, but it, it left it very open ended. It's an ending you don't really see coming and how it turns out, but uh, no, it was great. It held everything to the John Wick era and the standard, the standard and stuff like that, and amped it up even more so, kind of thing. And yeah, it's fun. Lots of funny parts, lots of crazier, like holy shit parts. Was there a Fortnite reference in John Wick? I. I don't That's think I paid, I don't think I paid attention, did but I you, think like, there was. Do you know why I ask? Because like they're Someone doing they did the crossover. Like yeah, John yeah, Wick's yeah, skin yeah. is now in Fortnite, which I, I find that. is an odd crossover. I can't remember. Yeah. I, he's a he's a gun toting badass. Yeah, but I just feel like the movie in the I feel like the age range. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, don't, markets, they don't mix. Yeah, no. yeah, I don't know if they did reference that. I never paid attention. I probably wouldn't have caught it because I I don't play Fortnite or understand if there's like a little nuance there you have to catch. But uh, I, saw, I saw it on Instagram. Like I saw a screenshot of it on Instagram. But just. The way the kills happen, you get it gets more creative. Um, as for more of like just looking at it as a visual, there was moments where I kind of felt like they definitely slowed it down so they could set up a move. So it wasn't, it wasn't some some moves had to be like okay, you have to slow it down and bring it and do what they need to do. It wasn't as seamless as you would have hoped it would have been, but that's just a small nitpicky. And seamless is so when you mean seamless, like you're not talking like yeah, you could kind of tell. Like is it edited more? Are the no no no? It's not an edit more? thing, so it's more of a. A technical thing of the movements, a choreography thing of right. the of the you know if he's doing like a, a little melee a, attack or a fight like, sequence, a fight sequence and stuff like that. It seemed like he had to set it up in a certain way, so you saw that they they were placed and then started placed and then started kind of thing. I think that's the only thing. Not that it threw me off. It's just you you notice it. It's like oh, okay, I see what what they had to do there, kind of thing. But yeah, as a non spoiler and just yeah, definitely so go out see of 10. it. Out of ten. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I, I'm I'm easy. I usually say I'll I'll be a ten. It was great. You're giving it a ten. I, I like. What do you f- give? What do you give the first one? All three of them are tens to me. Wow. I don't think I hated one thing about them. They all kept the story. It progressed it even further. You saw this badass character. It'd be and then, cool to watch them all back to back to back. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Oh, watch when you, when it gets down to it. You don't even know how far this could go. Like they left it open for a fourth. Who's to say they don't do for a fifth? Well, I guess it all depends on how uh, how much Keanu Reeves can take. That's a lot of training. Number one, he's 100% game to play it no matter what. He's openly said that in any interviews. Like, as long as the fans want it, I'll forever play John Wick. Even, even I don't know if he's gone this far, but I'm pretty sure, and my own thinking that the way he talks is that if there is even the Continental TV series that goes ahead, if mm-hmm. it gets greenlit and gets going, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to cameo, even if he's just passing the hallway of the Continental during, because I'm, I'm pretty Sam sure. Sam Jackson did that with, with the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple times. So I mean, something like that could definitely come around. And Keanu being the kind of person that he is, and, he, and him being like he likes the character that he's playing, mm-hmm. makes it even better, right? So yeah, um, definitely go see it. And the fourth one is confirmed for May twenty first, twenty twenty one. So it's gonna be years. a while, which is fine, which is good. Give us some time. Otherwise, you don't want to backlog it. Um, yeah, I want to see it, and I want to see Aladdin. Apparently, yeah. some good reviews for Aladdin already, which is awesome to well, hear. Like, I feel like I don't hear good, but I just heard it was like it was okay, or yeah. it wasn't like bad, but it was just kind of like I've uh, heard. I've heard a lot of people being surprised by it, so maybe I'm wrong in saying <clears throat> that they were good reviews. Just a lot of people well, were I heard pleasantly it was like a 60 surprised. To Seventy, so it's not bad, but it's kind of like yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like, that's that's past. Some yeah, pe- no. some people might want to expect something new from it, but I think because they have. The Broadway shows to go off of. There are already some new new songs that have gotten introduced. I don't know if they're Broadway or if they're new to this. I haven't really delved into it, but they um they just did a massive social media blast of like the Prince Ali song. Uh, Naomi yeah. Scott did her own thing. Um, she's actually a very good singer on her own. Yeah, surprising. She did actually her own album way back when, so she oh, has cool. that kind of background. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for it too, and it should be good. I mean, but I didn't think I didn't think they I didn't feel it necessary for them to release like the Prince Ali. We saw what we saw in the in the trailers. I didn't want to see any more kind of thing. It, it was my same Avengers feel. I don't want to see any more. I want to be surprised how they pull it off in the movie. Well, we but the, the difference between the Avengers and this is that we've already seen it. I, I get it, but I'm talking you the build up. There's no build up. You know exactly where it hits. Like. What I mean to say is that in Avengers, you yeah. don't know what leads into yeah. what, where, which connects to which, yes, and yes, anything yes. like that. 
we've all seen Aladdin. We know the story of Aladdin. True. So for them to release that, it'll entice more people to be like, oh, that sounded really good. Now yeah. I want to see it in the context of the movie. I'd rather wait for the movie, personal opinion. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was thinking when I was uh, I was looking at some of the trailers, because I did see that Prince Ali part, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Because the first one was so heavy on the genie, and the genie is pretty much the star of that movie, Yeah, I have a sense that this one's actually going to be showcasing Aladdin more so. Like, yeah. every time I think Aladdin, the original, I only think of genie. Mm-hmm. This one, because Will Smith, from what I understand, is not doing a Robin Williams impression, which is great. No. Uh, he's doing his own thing. It, it, it you will remember the Aladdin part versus just being like, oh, the genie was amazing. Yeah, he stole the show for sure, <laughs> way back. But yeah. it, it's nice that they're gonna find. I think they're gonna find a happy balance to showcase all their main characters very well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, anything to that, Anthony? Are you excited to see it? Well, I'm not a big Aladdin fan. Like I actually can't yeah. remember how it went. Oh wow. Than, like, yeah. No, I. I've seen Aladdin for a while. Like I was not really a big Disney kid. Just Disney Pixar was where I went. Hmm. I think for the point of like the genie as to why they probably didn't like focus heavily on Will Smith is just because they'll always compare him to Robin Williams. Always. And like yeah. it doesn't matter how good the movie is, if he's like the main focus, and they're not gonna talk about how good the movie was. They'll talk about how good Will Smith was. Hmm. Yeah. Which is why he always, he turned it down originally. He's like, heck no, hell yeah. no, I don't want to do that rule. It's, <laughs> it's a yeah, it's one of those things where like yeah. y- you you just can't do it. Um Actually, there was something I just saw today where Harrison Ford was saying, once I'm dead, no one's doing uh, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Oh, Indiana, yeah. And really, anybody else doing Indiana Jones will, is not, the, like, you just don't do it. We don't need Indiana Jones. Like, just no, Uncharted. We, like, I, it's I, the same story. Well, yeah. I mean, technically, it's well, Uncharted is the Indiana Jones story, which was the Lara Croft story and so on and so like, forth. There's but, so many properties you can just use it. For. Yeah. That's 30 years old today, by the way. Yeah. But uh, I think, is that Last Crusade? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, Last Crusade. I think the old. thing with those ones is, is because we're moving so much into these heavy, big, bombastic ones indiana jones gives us a chance to kind of slow down and go back to a like the the thing with period pieces which is really nice and kind of a good way for the for creators to actually be more creative is that you're in an age where you have to work more practical because the digital age hasn't hit yet yeah and it makes it a little bit more enticing to some people because again an indiana jones story in the 60s or whatever or the 50s even though crystal skull was stupid yeah at least in my opinion I still go back and I watch the other ones and I'm like, yeah, these are so still really good. Um, yep. But you're not having to worry about the, well, what about the age of technology and how that affects your movie, yeah. um, which could end up hamstringing it. Uh, Nolan, Christopher Nolan's new movie is an espionage epic called good. Tenant. I think it's Tenant, something like Tenant. Tenet. No information, just the title. Uh, I th- it, all I, that I just saw a quick uh, couple espionage. of people just saying it was an espionage epic, which is I mm. think awesome. So it's going to be him kind of doing his own James es- Bond type espionage. Of thing. So like period piece, I think we kind of uh, yeah. It, it was one thing I called. I I think I said like it'd be nice to see him do a period piece. Well, he did yeah, with he Dunkirk. Did Dunkirk. I think that was his most recent, was it not? I believe so. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I just haven't cool. seen that yet fully myself. No. So I just don't know if it? I want to watch Dunkirk because I feel no? like I missed the boat on IMAX. And I just don't know oh, if it's you like, mean, if oh, be, visually, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, I don't be like as good watching on my TV. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if uh, I know the theaters always release like the ones here release some of the other old ones. A friend of mine saw 2001 A Space Odyssey for the first time in IMAX. In IMAX yeah. And I was just like, yeah. I haven't even done that. that. Oh, my God. Like, I haven't seen it in the in the theater. Yeah. And I remember the first time I watched it. And I still think it's one of the greatest science fiction movies ever. And I'm like, I, I can only imagine what a lot of just visually those scenes mm-hmm. would be on IMAX. I was yeah. super jealous. It just sucks like where we're at, like the IMAX we have. We have one of one of three in North America. Ours is ours is one of three that is at the level like that, at that that's able to yeah. I forget the actual specs, but it's like yeah. we're pretty lucky with the with the technology. They don't it doesn't have to be has. converted. It's basically what they filmed it in gets put on that reel and it's yeah. done. Also something cool is that we were one of six cities in America and Canada to actually like have the Dark Knight trilogy played. Oh, cool. Like oh, yeah, yeah, recently, yeah. But it was I was talking to my friend Pano who went, and uh, speaking of, he's calling me right now. But uh, <laughs> uh, I was talking to him. And We're busy, fuck. Yeah, Chris Nolan was supposed to be there for a Q&A. They, oh, actually, they advertised Chris here? Nolan Q&A, yeah. But it was oh. actually just a Skype pre-recorded call. Oh. They advertised it as, like, Chris Nolan's going to be doing answering questions. Bastards. So, yeah, no. He did get a replica <laughs> bat. He's going to answer battery. questions. These are the oh. questions you have to ask him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In this order. But to go back to my point, it's like that we it's not run like a regular movie theater. It's only has these one offs once in a while. It's like mm-hmm. to me if they can if they converted even just one theater, I don't know if they could pull it off, but converted one of the theaters in 
let's say the the Galaxy one we have into an IMAX specific, that'd be something worth it. Maybe less in the seats, and I don't know how they can make it work, but I th- less in the sh- seats and more in the sheets. What? Sorry. Sure. Totally. Totally. But totally, yeah, bro. that's that's the one problem we have. Otherwise, we'd probably get in these movies on the regular like all the time. It'd rehash them or whatever. There's like a big demand for people going to IMAX. I feel like it's like a once in a while like well, treat. It, it's again, the fact that it's where we're at, it's limited seating. It's not a regularly run thing. Like they did, uh, I think they did it for Star Wars. Yeah. Was Star the Wars the one? The one I saw was with G and Nick and that was Rogue One. Yes, yeah. we saw that's so what Star Wars saw. had always been one of the ones that always went there no matter what. Like there's no reason why all the Avengers movies couldn't have gone there. Well the, no, what but they, they do is they release a lot of older ones on there. So true, I, true. I wouldn't be surprised if they released some. But I'm just Avengers saying for one. new releases, Star Wars is always number one in there. Sure. Uh they could have done that for these two. I'm just whatever. Uh last week I forgot to mention this, but James Wan is directing a new more the new Mortal Kombat movie. And James Wan, for those of you who don't know, uh, did a bunch of the Saw movies. Uh, I think he did Insidious. I don't remember. But he also did Aquaman, which made a bunch of money. Yeah. So the Aquaman director doing some Mortal Kombat. I haven't seen Aquaman yet, but I've heard good things. I'm on board. I'm super stoked for it. To piggyback off your Saw comment, did you hear about Chris Rock rebooting no. it? Chris Isn't Rock? Chris Rock, the black Chris Rock yes. Yeah. Chris Rock apparently is re- rebooting... I, that's what they made it seem like he's rebooting the Saw franchise. That's that. so weird. Saw, I wish like, to me the Saw franchise is perfect as it is. I love it. Like Saw, hey. I love it. Oh my yeah. god! Downhill. Like me, just, I like the first one. After that, I'm just I like, I still no like thanks. Them. They're great. You know what the you know what the problem was? It was the it's the problem I found with those ones. Um, a it got super convoluted, so it did that thing where, um, after the seventh one, oh, the guy from the first one is like. And been a part of this thing since the beginning and everything like that, just to add um, yeah. this this faux uh, intellectual or I, I guess the faux kind of. Why would you take uh, it side, you say, sideways? Why would you take it move. as a faux though? Like, Be- well, because if uh, if to throw something at the end of of it. Mm-hmm. So okay, the issues with the Sherlock movies with Robert Downey Jr. Okay, you don't know what his thought process is or any, anything until the very end. And at the end of the movie, he knew everything. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, that's fucking stupid. In the Sherlock show, the BBC one, you kind of follow him along mm-hmm. as he's discovering these things. So for Saw to just keep rehashing older characters as they get greenlit, because they never said, oh, guess what? Saw's coming out and we're doing nine of these or however many they did. Mm-hmm. It's just as it's come along. So you can see that the writers are like, oh, wait. Let's have this guy come in at the at like the end of our the, whoever's mm-hmm. doing the eighth one or the seventh one or whatever. Let's have the guy from the first one be the pseudo architect that's been part of it the whole time, and then you can have this very empty "oh my god" moment at the end of it. But it's empty because nothing earlier even sh- showed it. It just came out of nowhere, and for me, mm-hmm. that doesn't make a a good conclusion to anything. That just mm-hmm. means that you got super lazy and you just thought this is, good. it's like a jump scare. It's just a cheap trick that movies use. At least that's what I think. I did. I disagree with that. Well, with, I know because, but you, but you like most things in general, like you, yeah, like, but I didn't. And, pick, pick oh, it. and they, uh, for me, I found that they really went in, they leaned into their torture porn stuff. Yes. Yeah. Well, way, that's, way, that's exactly way, way what it much. is. <laughs> but the, the first one wasn't, that's why I enjoy the first one. Well, like the first, the first one, one was so simple and, yeah, it, it was what it was, and like you only got that little bit at the end. Then it started but, escalating from there. So what happened was they sacrificed story mm-hmm. to, at least for me, it mm-hmm. sacrificed a lot of some of some really interesting story that they could have done. Um, like the second one was a good reveal with the kid in the safe. Yeah, that was it. That was smart. But there was a lot of stuff that was happening that was really torture porny. But that wasn't the the that didn't seem like that was the goal with the first one. Uh, a lot of shows do that too. Like TV in general has done that. Criminal Minds really dove deep into that. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but Watched Mandy Patinkin, Mandy Patinkin, who was a guy on there who's really good. Criminal he, Minds. Yeah. It's a TV show. I know. He was, Mandy Patinkin was on it? Yeah. He was in there our first season. Trying seasons. to think, I, I thought you made your mistake for Homeland. No. I don't think he's in there. Yes, he is. He I left the show. I was a kid. I have no idea. He left the show because they were really gratuitous so, with a lot of their torture scenes, which early I agree. Left. You know, that, that show, I remember that show scarred me. There was this one scene where this guy was in like this black suit, and he's like, I'm no one, and that would like scarred the shit out of me. But they, like, the thing is, those ones, and, and Saw, and even Hostel, like they, the first Hostel was actually quite interesting because 
there was very little torture stuff. And then you're wondering what the hell's going on. There's this background, seedy, disgusting, gross, evil underbelly going on, uh, fueled by the evil desires of men and women, of, of humans, of what their capacity is and how much they'll pay to do certain things to certain people, right? But the second one, they amped it up by having a bunch of extra torture scenes and it's really gross. Like, some people might like it, cool, but for me, it didn't do it. That's why the Saw movies all failed progressively for me since the first one. The thing you said about like setting up things like to like have the payoff at the end, I agree with because when I used to watch The Flash, like I don't now because it's really shitty, but like the Flash, or Barry, or the, the Flash would go into the future and he'd see like a future version of himself and he'd yeah. kind of like have that like thing where it's like you'd see the future version of himself like pass and like kind of show how he got to that point. Yeah. Which I thought was cool because he like it showed that they actually had a plan and shit. Yeah. Like in season one, it said like Flash goes to jail and he goes to jail. I think in season five, from my understanding, I don't watch it anymore, but I just think like I like shows like that that have that smart payoff where it's kind of like. You got to see how it gets to that point. Well, and there's there's shows that do it well. Like I said, if, if I can follow along with it and I, I'm with the detective, for instance, figuring this thing out, then great. But they didn't do anything in those Saw movies to. And I mean, this is all based on the fact that Chris Rock wants to reboot some of these, but they didn't do anything in those movies to hint at it early on. It's just boom, here it is. And that's it. At least in the second one, for instance, he says, all you have to do is stay here with me and you'll you'll I'll get you your son or everything like that. And that's all uh, Donnie Wahlberg had character had to do. But it was already established in the beginning. All the other ones never established anything. And then all of a sudden you get this reveal at the end mm-hmm. and then you're supposed to feel something. And I guess we're going to talk about it when we get into. Actually, no, let's just get into Game of Thrones before. One more oh, thing. sorry. Yeah. Uh, so this is just a cool thing because there was a debate on if like the Sonic like changing his design was just like a publicity stunt. Did we talk about this? Well, did like, I talk about this with the you? Publicity stunt? Yes, we did talk about it a while. Okay, cool. I, I was I had that still in my notes and I forgot if we talked about this. Please go so ahead. So there was a debate on whether it was or not because like they said there's no way to be able to change it by November. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now it's not. It got pushed back to Valentine's Day, 2020. Right. Yeah. So it shows that they actually are actually taking criticism and they weren't just you know like fucking <laughs> with the fans the whole time. So I think that's pretty cool. Well, and and that's why we talked about was it a, an actual ploy to be like, hey, let's release this quick teaser because he is what, he is an entity in the movie that we don't have to necessarily reshoot. We just have to change some things. I mean, there's going to be a lot of work put into it, mm-hmm. um, but they can eat. I mean, I've never done any of these before. I've never done a movie before, so I don't know how easily it would be to change him. But, you know, they could in the confines of his face just change him versus having to get all the actors back and reshoot a bunch. Of For stuff. everyone who complained about the movie, though. You guys better go watch the fucking movie because mm. you <laughs> just made an animator's life hell by having to redo the whole fucking thing. You know what I watched? Uh, yeah, not yesterday. I finished watching yesterday. Uh, Mission Impossible Fallout. It's great, eh? That was like it's really last, good. Was last year. That was, that was the last. Yeah, year. That was a good movie. That was the first one I saw. Well, and and all I I kept looking at Henry Cavill's yeah. mustache, and it's glorious, by the way. And I'm just I go to Sofa and I'm like. That mustache cost Warner Bros. like $2 million. It's a $2 million mustache. Fuck, did it look good. That was a good movie. That was good. That's going to... That that series is another one of those series that, like, they're just really good. Yeah. After the third one... after Sorry, after the second one, because the second one was a bit of a disaster, they just kept just fucking hammering them out, and they're interesting, and they're really good, and they're fun, yeah. and they're exciting, and they're like... Like, yeah, they're really good. I don't know. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, let's get into Game of Thrones, one of the most uh, arguably divisive finales ever. Is it most hated or most divisive? I think divisive. Divisive, I still feel yeah. Like divisive. How much your mother was pretty hated from like my even like fans on my page. Like, yeah. it seems pretty. I don't know. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, it's early to tell for Game of Thrones. It depends where you look because if you go online and on the YouTube's, people hate it, like absolutely hate it. Yeah, and then you have some people that are fans of it, everything like that. Like I, I searched. I looked at all sorts of reviews after to hear what, like, the general, like, people Consensus. were, like, from, and not just from YouTube channels that have been hating the whole season from the beginning, because there are those ones. Yeah. But then other publications that are a little more diplomatic when it comes to the reviews. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, there's, there, it's, I would say divisive is the right term. Yeah. Uh, if you, if I were to take all of them, I think I went through, like, 13 videos hmm. just to get a good idea. I didn't idea. get through that many. I got, like, maybe through four or five at most. Um, the cringiest one I saw. If you really want to like feel uncomfortable, and uh, which it, it, it's kind of disappointing because I'm not going to say the guy's name, 
But the person that's spearheading the review who has been spearheading it uh, on Collider. So if you go to Collider videos on YouTube mm-hmm. and stuff, they do, they've done one. And um, the guy that's on there has just been, he's just gone off the rails. Not the fact that he hates the finale, but he's throwing a lot of worldly things into it that have no bearing whatsoever. And he's really taken it. Anyways, it was super yeah. cringy. So if you want to cringe, just go to Collider and take a look at their uh, finale review and you'll know who I'm talking about, or at least you should, because fuck, man, I was like, I-, I just wanted to tell this dude to shut up. And I've been like a fan of his for a long time. And I'm like, you've officially gone off the rails. So if you want to take a look at that, that's uh, like I said, on Collider. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, what did you guys think? Okay, well, it reminds me of the shortest, obviously, so I'll just get it all the way. Uh, I'm like, I'd say the least core fan of Game of Thrones in this room. Mm-hmm. So I was, I'm a very casual fan. Yeah. So like, I don't even know like all the characters and names in the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, I was enjoying it. Like I got spoiled because I was just scrolling on YouTube and it should have said spoiler alert, I guess. I wouldn't they know we're fucking breaking it down. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Sorry. Full spoiler. Uh, yeah. Jon Snow kills Daenerys, dragon, like melts the iron throw. And I'm like, oh, like, okay, whatever. Like I figured he was going to kill her anyway, mm-hmm. but that was like only halfway through the episode and i thought mm. it'd be like that was the finale because like yeah. you know like that's just how i imagined an ending like someone you know was killed that needs a lot of filler to get there <laughs> yeah no and then like i was like okay this is like this happened fast so i just kept watching and i thought it was like enjoyable the first half was kind of cool the mm-hmm. second half though i thought was like just very bad because like, it set up a lot of things which you shouldn't do in a finale like you shouldn't set shit up like, you should conclude stuff. Yeah. So, I'm like, this would be a great season finale, but mm-hmm. this is a fucking series finale, so this doesn't, like... Yeah. It made me want a lot of things, which is why, like, it sucks as a series finale. Okay. Uh, I'm disappointed that they're not going to do an Arya spinoff, because... Everyone is. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the one fucking spinoff people want, and they're refusing to do it. Well, I... Th- when you really final. look at it, though, to have an Arya spinoff, she gets to Westeros. Really, how many things can that... Like, can it be where she's... Yeah, she's meeting new people, but then she'll end up just killing them and going off another thing but i get it. like yeah. i was like they also oh, they also said they're not going to do a sequel to game of thrones right no so i just feel it was just a waste of an episode because they set so many things up and like you can do it like the dark knight did how they set up so you can just kind of like i keep saying like i'm sorry but how you can just imagine how the ending you and happened. nick man the like brothers like oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> but um <laughs> But um, fuck, I wish I would have. I wish I would have changed the name for the thing. I already made the posters for this episode. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. But um, the Dark Knight Rises, <laughs> how you didn't know if Batman died or not, it was kind of up to yeah. your imagination. Yeah, I think that would have been a good way to do it. Or they kind of had it open ended instead of setting up so many fucking different storylines that will probably never have a payoff. That was their way of doing the open ended thing. I think, to be honest, to interpret your own way. I don't know. Overall, I think that there was no possible outcome that would be a good finale for this series. Okay. Like, I feel I feel that no one would actually enjoy it either way. Okay. So it was a lose-lose. And I, I don't know, overall, it was mm-hmm. an enjoyable run to watch Game of Thrones. But yeah, yeah. that's it. Uh, now to our biggest fan in the room. Yeah. Go for it. Um, Yeah, I'm torn with it. There's, I, I've always said I... The end result of certain scenes and certain things have I'm always okay with. Mm-hmm. Like I can, I'm okay with the end result minus the. So of course, the brand thing I'm very torn. If he's like the fact that he's made king, and like the way they came about it, it was like okay, Sansa would have been the best choice, or you know anyone. But anyways, uh, how they get there always is a little messy. They just they just went really quick and dirty, and it's like oh boom, there you go, here we are. Um, as for finale with how they've set everything up, I agree. Like, okay, maybe this is the best finale we could have hoped for. Like, end like end result of each person's character, and um, that's why if if you go to Ben Shapiro's, like I sent you it. Did you review I Game of Thrones? That. Yeah, is that? He's Ben a, Shapiro reviewed Game of Thrones. He's yes. a massive fan. He is, and he did one of the best. I, I enjoyed his review. He and, did a very good one, and he he's done each episode. Yeah, he's done, and the thing is, he gave what should have happened and i'm like i totally agree with that so what his his uh his um suggestion would have been let's say start from you know everything that happened up until john killing daenerys let's say up until then i think it was fine i enjoyed the episode quite a bit he kills daenerys and then the dragon comes dragon just destroys iron throne and that's it let's say it still destroys the iron throne 
John should have mounted that shit and put the Unsullied and Dothraki in their place and said, I am who I am kind of thing. And then you can cut to the point where he abdicates his throne. He's like, I don't want this. And then he puts forth the council. He calls the people and does the whole hoopla of, you know, everyone vote for a new ruler. Democracy. Democ- or de- or, yeah, de- democracy. Yeah, in their own way. Versus a ter- tyrannical rule. Or, exactly. Uh, so, like, monarchy. that's where Shapiro said this. And I'm like, yeah, I totally agree. And to reach the conclusion of Bran, maybe not. Um, I guess it's... It was always actually, I think someone even said it from the beginning. Gwendolyn Christie, actually, who plays Brienne, she actually said in an interview way back when mm-hmm. that Bran could be like right on a left field. Someone would get it like that. Um, I don't know. Like to me, it's just it's Bran or Sansa would have been the best option, I guess. I don't know. I was going for Sansa. That's yeah. what I was rooting for. So then that way the North wouldn't have to necessarily bow to anyone except their own person. But she's still like, we need someone in the North. So. I see how that turned out and how everything. I don't know. It was very interesting. I I still enjoyed it. I'm not on the hate train. I just didn't like certain parts. If I was to kind of mm-hmm. tie it all together as my opinion of the whole episode. And even the season's kind of been that way for myself too. The end result, long night. Disappointing overall in between. But the end result, I'm still cool with Aya doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You. I'm, I'm in the... So the reason I dislike it is because of the way that season eight has just gone. Mm-hmm. So if they had given, if they have taken more time, yeah. And from what I understand, there's, I, I've seen both. I've seen one that HBO won't and HBO will give them the time and the money to make another season or make yeah. longer episodes. I'm of the belief that HBO would have given them here, have 10 episodes. That's have 12, have 13 they, episodes. Or I think they did offer. Yeah. Let's say they did offer, and these guys turned it down for to go to their Star Wars thing. That's what I was going to say. That's yeah. what I heard, too. And a, there's some people on the one side saying that's not the case. There's other mm-hmm. people that are saying that it is. I'm of the belief that that is the case, that they yeah. wanted to get on the Star Wars train, and they're like, no, let's just finish this off. Hey, uh, we can finish this in eight episodes or however many, what it say, six episodes or whatever. Yeah. And call it a day. Mm-hmm. The finale was a result of those decisions. Mm-hmm. The other thing, it's taken two years to get this season. Yeah. So how much of it was already done before? It's true. And how much did they lead up yeah. into the seasons, right? Yeah. My guess is a lot of it was done in that first year and a half because obviously you have to get it edited and, and put out and everything like that. Shoots. The logistics behind it are astronomical. Like mm-hmm. like Hob- or Lord of the Rings logistics have gone into this show. Yeah. So because of those decisions that were made and because it was both a rush season Mm-hmm. A very sporadic season, uh, a very uh, jarring season in that things happened just out of nowhere. Yeah. We're here, we're there, then something major happens, and yeah. there was no lead up. It just happened, yeah. right? The subversion of expectations, all that stuff. So I was on board for the first half of the of the episode, mm-hmm. even though you know I had my issues with it. I was like, okay, this is cool. Obviously, everyone's favorite shot is a shot of the dragon opening yeah. up its wings. It was an incredible shot. Yeah. Tyrion, when he saw his brother and sister, which is really weird because there's everyone said there's like all that space on the yeah. side. Like they just happened to be in that spot where and yeah. he just happened to find them. Anyways, uh, his acting, though, was yeah. outstanding. That's been the number one thing that <laughs> says like we got some of the best acting Thanks to Peter Dinklage through this whole season. Like I, series. I will say from everybody, the acting is still good. You yeah. have to realize that these people are working with what they're given. Yep. And much like you look at uh, the original Star Wars, that script, a lot of people were making fun of that script in the movie. And the fact that you had Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill, they were able to take that script and make it mm-hmm. good. Right. Yeah. So I think the finale suffered from that. And obviously, if they had mm-hmm. the ending of of when John killed Daenerys. Yeah. That se- that seemed like a ending of an episode and then the next episode is what gives us our finale. Um yeah. now the rest of it it just fizzled. Mm-hmm. Um I didn't care for it. I felt that they gave Peter Dinklage a lot of monologues to get him an Emmy. Uh they just gave him here. Have this yeah. 20 page thing, have this 10 page thing and really give him the monologues. Yeah. Um there was, uh, and and it just felt it was very thrown together. Yeah, like that Sam saying, "Hey, we wrote this. It's called the Song of Ice and Fire." Mm. All I was expecting was a wah wah, and then a laugh track after. Like, yeah. c- 
come on. How lazy can you be? So I think a lot of it is is laziness. They directed it themselves. D, uh, D, uh, Weiss and Benioff, they Was directed that episode. Was it only that episode themselves? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but there's also another thought I had. Um, I don't know how prepared these guys were. I mean, this is twofold. Dan Murrow from uh, Fandom Entertainment from the Screen Junkies was saying he doesn't think that these guys were actually prepared to do the finale to this show without George R. R. Martin's full book done. Yeah. And that's fine. But when you realize two years before or so that, hey, you are doing the finale, yeah. you adapt. You don't use that as an excuse. Yeah. You know, that's a, it is a very good point because if I'm like, hey, by the way, you're actually writing the finale for these books that I had from the 90s that are this massive thing mm-hmm. based on the show. That That's a huge undertaking, right? Yeah. But you've already established what you, you've established in your show. You've already made changes in your show. Mm-hmm. So you should be finishing your show, not George R. R. Martin's story. You have his footnotes. You have yeah. who's going to die, who isn't, what's going to happen, everything like that. But it's their execution that failed hard for me, and yeah. that, and the finale really showed that. It was just a, it was just an execution of everything leading up to it. Mm-hmm. We get our finale, which if they executed things better earlier, mm-hmm. I think that finale would have been better received because there would have been a better payoff. It yeah. wouldn't have just been the at the end of it all. This is what happens, and then boom, like the Bran Stark thing, which harkens back to the Saw conversation. Bran Stark being the Night King, which is a completely left side. A uh, lot of left field subversion of expectations move mm-hmm. is similar to Saw pulling out a character from the first Saw in the last Saw just to be like, whoa, I didn't see this coming. Mm-hmm. And it feels empty. That's that's kind of how it reminded me when we were talking about the Saw thing. Yeah. Um, because they've shown in the, in the show that they don't give a shit about Bran. In the books, he's a major part of it. So it would probably yeah. make sense. I haven't read the yeah. books. This is just what I've 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 been I've been watching a lot of footnotes of the books and the differences between the show. Yeah. Uh, so that's why a lot of that stuff was an issue mm-hmm. because they they clearly didn't know what to do with Bran. Yeah. And Bran's importance was very empty because it's like, well, you never showed us that in the show that he was important. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, also one last thing: if I was going to finish the episode, the dragon would have tried to burn John. Then John yeah, would have, uh, have emerged too. unscathed, like Daenerys emerged yeah. unscathed, and then Drogon would have bowed down. Hmm. That's how I would have done that scene. Because my biggest contention is that this show, show seemed to have been circling around John's story, and John has been reduced to, I don't want it, I don't know, and giving stares. And that yeah. really, really bothers me well, because they ruined everything. Him coming back to life meant nothing except to fight Ramsey Bolton, that's it, because yeah. he didn't even fight much in the long night. And his name reveal, which was the biggest thing, well, Ned Stark's secret yeah. that he went to the grave for meant absolutely nothing at the end yeah. of the day, aside from the the, the Night King meaning nothing yeah. and all that stuff. But. John is the personification of a song of ice and fire, technically, between mm-hmm. Rhaegar and Lyanna, right? How much time have they given to him being a mystery? Lots. They've inv- And the show it has yeah. invited the public to ask these questions, to uh, figure it out, to theorize, to all this stuff. Yeah. And once they found out, oh, hey, these guys are actually doing the thing that we may or may not have realized that we wanted them to do, which is talk about the fucking show. Yeah. Well, let's throw all that out the window to get them out of left field. It's he, like, no, that's John, not how that works. Yeah. I felt John needed his selfish moment. And and that's why there's like there's tons of shirts already that say John deserved better. And that's true. He did. He did deserve better. He needed his selfish moment where he took the rain. If you're talking about an honor move, you have to do the one thing you hate to do and just rule for that even little bit. Abjecate after, like I agree with Shapiro, and say, then you can do guys do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. I'm going to where I believe I belong. Which and he could still go back to the north of the wall. Yeah. You know? But why are they there though? I'm sorry. Like what what are they off the wall for? That's a huge that's a good question. I don't know. Everything's why? cool. Why like, are they at the wall? Well, they were there. Like, weren't they there to protect, like, so the Night King or whatever? And Wildlings. True. For forever, that was the, well, I'm against the Wildlings. Now that doesn't matter. But to them, it's like, this is all we know. And well, and like how Tyrion said, there still be a place needed for bastards, bastards and broken, and broken things, things, right? So it's very fitting that that still exists. And for whatever reason, again, Castle Black is, like, miles and miles away from Eastwatch by the Sea where the wall actually fell. Now, whether they're going to look at rebuilding it, what for, who knows. But... 
this is what's going on now. John went north to help to live with the wildlings, to help them to be king beyond the wall kind of thing. And that's where your your thing, like you're just up to interpretation. You're just kind of guessing what's going to happen next. Sansa's going to rule the north, whatever. She might find someone to bang and have kids and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Aya is going to go be a pirate and so on and so forth. Like it's just, you don't know. I felt there. I felt that conclusion was fine. Like I didn't feel like they yeah. set up anything. I just felt that they concluded their stories For as the these part, kids yeah. in Winterfell that meant nothing to anybody. Yeah, and now they're coming into their own. And mm-hmm. John's going to where he feels most comfortable. He's never felt more comfortable than north of the wall. Yeah. Arya is discovering west of Westeros, which she said it. I think in the first season, she um, mentioned it west in the season, and she also mentioned it in also I think season seven when she came back. Either way. And then Sansa's the rightful queen, which she looked incredible, like that like that whole sequence at the end. So I felt for me just that if I just mm-hmm. took that by itself, that would be a cool conclusion. Like if they gave me that as a mm-hmm. promo, being like, hey, this is how it ends, then I'm going to be like, shit, how did we get here? Because yeah. these kids have been thrown all over Westeros. Yeah. But I can totally see how you see it as like, no, it seems like they're setting up stuff that they're not going to pay off. Totally yeah. agree with that. Um. And then the other one I took a note of, Bran had said that he isn't the lord of anything when Sansa yeah, said I'm he's the, the lord. Raven. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm the lord of the Winterfell because he is the three-eyed raven. Mm-hmm. Bran is the fucking worst. If Daenerys is shitty, Bran is even worse because he knew this was going to happen. And he clearly went yeah. to Westeros when he said, why do you think I came all the way up here? Because he knew that millions of people would have been murdered. Mm-hmm. She would have died and that he's going to be king. Question. We're under the impression the three-eyed raven can see the future as well. Yeah, past, yeah, present. Like he, he lives in everything, like past, present, okay. future, the whole I, deal. I, I can't recall. And like after people keep talking about this, I'm just like, oh, I thought he just knew the past and the present. He knows everything. But he said, like, why do you think I came here? It imply that he didn't know the future. Yeah. True. Which means that he knew that Daenerys would have done what she did. Exactly. Everything would have happened so the way it happened. Brand's like, a piece of dude. shit. Well, like, what else? Like, and it's funny that outcome? Sansa pretty much called him a dickless fuck in front of everybody, mm. too. <laughs> well, like, I'll tell you what. Like, and his first act as king is like if, looking to his sister being like, all right, you can have Winterfell. That's like, that's like nepotism at its peak, even yeah. though he's not. He's not human, or he's not his her, her brother anymore. Yeah. But he still operates like he kind of it, like it's so weird those rules, which goes to show that those guys, the creators, had no idea what the fuck to do with him. Yeah. So it, it's kind of funny at the end of all this with like George R. R. Martin even he defended the finale again because people are in uproar, the hates, the hate trains going full blown kind of thing. But George R. R. Martin himself kind of defended. And he said, "Listen, they ended what they ended, and it's what the feet what they brought to life was pretty amazing." At the end of the day, what oh, we got for sure, and yes, we we feel very empty and disappointed, and yes, angry at, at some parts and stuff like that, and it'll forever be known as such. And it's a shitty finale. True, it's like Lost at this point. I still Lot- lost. <laughs> well, I because of this finale and how yeah. they've done it, I actually like Lost a little bit. Lost more. finale a little bit better than this one because at least would you have been? But you were more invested now. in. I feel people were way more invested in Game of Thrones. They were. I was more invested in Lost than I was in Game of Thrones. Way I, back when. See, I, yeah, at the time period. But if I was to say right now, my favorite show is still Game of Thrones. We got six seasons of absolute perfection, in my opinion. Breaking I Bad's mine. That's great, too. And it still has the best finale known to man. Again, pound for pound, yeah. start pound to finish. For pound. pound for pound? <laughs> I've said this before on the show. I know. You just haven't joking. been on the show. Pound for pound, if you take every single episode and how good each episode was and how good each season was, in my opinion, it is one of the best shows out there metrically. If you were to take how many fans hated certain episodes, there's maybe three that people can say I didn't like, at least that I've seen. Um, but that's in the entire five season run. And the finale was outstanding. And the thing is, I knew what the finale was going to be. I got it spoiled for me. Even Soph got it spoiled by me by accident. And then the finale came and Soph's like, holy shit. Why? Because it's not what happens it's how you get there. I I didn't care if so, nobody spoiled Endgame for me, which was great. And I don't know if you guys got spoiled. No. If someone were to tell me that Captain America gets Thor's hammer, I'd have been like, sweet. But I want to see how it gets there. Mm-hmm. Because if much like the book with the Song of Ice and Fire, mm-hmm. Thor just throws it to him and he catches it and that's it. That feels empty. But Thor's about to die. And we see the hammer slowly lifting up, but we don't see who does it. And even though we know 
we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we see it happening. That's a satisfying conclusion. Even just a, like something as innocuous, not innocuous, something as small as Captain America holding Mjolnir. Mm-hmm. And they did it in such a, a satisfying way. Yeah. But if someone were to tell you Cap holds uh, his shield in Endgame, you'd be like, or the hammer, you'd be like, that's amazing. I want to see what it leads up to mm-hmm. because if it doesn't satisfy, it just doesn't satisfy. And yeah. that's what makes a, an empty mm-hmm. feeling at the end of everything. And I think a lot of people are just feeling very empty with mm-hmm. the way that everything went. Um, again, much like the turn we talked about last time with Daenerys, we saw it coming a mile away yeah. because they fast forwarded that shit so fast. Yeah. They, Even though we've seen her. More, they needed more episodes. And yeah. it's, it's just funny how they went from like, you look, one to six is 10 episodes standard. Yeah. They were given 10 for each of these seasons guaranteed. I'm guaranteeing that 100%. I believe that. Make 50% of them over an hour mm-hmm. minimum. You should your, your long night can still be if you want it that 80 minutes. Great. I have no qualms with that. But... um at the end result, like you, you hated the long night and how it it made it like the Night King useless for how long. But at the end of the day, how they set it up. Well, I'll tell you how they set it up. Yeah, they set it up like the long night and the Night King are extremely important to the story that they gave us. Yeah, and they were up under- until that point. <laughs> right, which yeah. then makes so. This is what bothers me about the finale and what they did in season eight. Mm-hmm. If you were to go back and watch Game of Thrones from the beginning, which I'm sure a lot of people are. Mm-hmm. Now, it, sorry, let me try this again. Take two. Take two. Um, if you go, if you remember what Game of Thrones brought to you, mm-hmm. the level of the execution of the writing, which even though it was George R.R. Martin's, you still have to translate that. Right. It's very difficult to do. The acting, the situations, the, the small moments that really made you think and get invested. Yeah. The big crazy moments, red wedding moments, uh, hard home, all that stuff that got your like got you super excited. Some of the payoffs, some of the not payoffs, Ned Stark dying, all that stuff. The show brought you a lot of a lot, mm-hmm. right? It changed the game. It changed the way people watch TV. It changed the way that, um, let's say HBO is going to rethink looking at how they're going to give money to these shows. Um, it showed that. For something that lives in a Lord of the Rings esque world, mm-hmm. swords, shields, a little bit of magic, some weird stuff, everybody gets behind that because the big thing with studios is how many people are going to get behind this idea. Will this show prove that a lot of fucking people are going to get invested in it? Where I was going before I had to do my take two is all of that stuff that led up to this finale or this final season seemingly meant nothing. Mm-hmm. So then going back and watching it is very difficult because it means nothing at the end of the day. That's because, what, uh, like, like, no, please go. I'm done. So I was talking to my friend who's also like a big Game of Thrones fan. And we're talking about the spinoffs yep. and how they're doing the first, like, are they doing the Night King mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. a spinoff? Mm-hmm. And he was saying, like, we both agreed that it's pointless because we know how it ends. And just seeing him get to that point isn't going to be really redeeming because... You, you know, know you know, there's another long night that existed. There is. Yeah. No, that's fine. That, that, but you're saying that... Isn't you, it based on this, like, Night King, though? Yeah, but how it starts and how it's... There's another long night that begins and they're fighting and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, but so the, long, the long night, from what I understand, and I could be wrong on this, is a mm-hmm. series, uh, uh, however long winter is, right? There's winters coming and you can have a generation of people that live and die in the winter and everything like that. And is the long night separate from that long winter or is the long night that winter generation thing where it's all night like I, I don't I don't understand the rules behind the long night versus uh um winter coming and no one knows how long it'll well, be. Well isn't winter coming just like the long night because the long night is winter? That's what I understand. I, I'm yeah, I don't know either. Mm-hmm. So to your point, that's a great point because anything that comes up with um if you were to go back and, and even do a prequel and stuff, well that's great, but in the show that we all got invested and watched, it means nothing. Uh, Ned's secret means nothing. Um, Daenerys and the dragons that, that that had its own thing or whatever. Uh, Jamie's arc or whatever, turning into a good person or whatever means nothing. It was nice that Brienne wrote in there. I don't know if she wrote anything for herself. I, I think she, she, uh, she should have. Um, but there's all these things that are seemingly important that mean nothing. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of the day, sorry. 
at the end of the day, when you go back and watch a movie, you want to go back and, and pick out moments that you missed. Like what I've seen Breaking Bad four times. And the reason I've gone back and seen it once I saw it was Soph. The fourth time I remember it was on TV and I was like watching halfway through season two and I was like, I'm just going to finish it. The second time, though, was how did we get here? How did Walter White start changing to become a really shitty evil person? And when I go back and watch it, I can actually pick out those moments and I can pick out moments earlier and later and how it evolves. If I go back and watch Game of Thrones... I'll get some really cool scenes with some really nice dialogue, but I ultimately know that it means nothing. Therefore, it is empty to me. I don't know. No, I agree 100%. Vasily, V, yeah. what do you, do you concur? On some points, yeah. It did, it did feel that way, sure. Does it feel that way going forward? Like if you were to go and rewatch it and these things come up and you're wondering about Jon Snow and, and all that other, like he's Aegon Targaryen, which literally meant nothing. They sidelined yeah. Jon this entire season yeah. and he did nothing. Yeah. Um, him coming back to life means nothing. Melisandre, who's d- pulling out fucking ghosts from her vag, like means nothing. All of this and the fact that the show made the Long Night and the Night King more important than from what I understand the books have made it. Yeah. Because in the books... The Night King is kind of a side thing. That's yeah. again, these are one of those comparisons. I, I got to read the books. I, I, again, th- th- this is the comparison stuff <laughs> yeah. that I, I've watched on YouTube. I think I've gone through five or six uh, different ones that say different things about how things worked out. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, even the Red Wedding was done wrong, but they executed it masterfully. That's that's where it bothers me because they were able to execute a lot of stuff masterfully, and then and yet. The finale, the final season of this show that's big. Mm -hmm. Like, we've been watching this show since, I don't know, like the second phase. This is post-Avengers, and we're following the MCU as we're following Game of Thrones. It's these two massive properties that are meeting together in the same year. They have their final, like all of this Mm -hmm. stuff built up. One is satisfying, and the other one uh, isn't, right? Like, it's just just a weird, it's weird. Yeah. You know, going back to stuff. Um. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. If you have anything else, I don't know. What are your favorite moments from the finale? Let's say I just have a question first. Yeah. Please. What? Like, why wasn't Arya on the white horse at the beginning of the episode? Like, what was the point of setting like her being on it? No one knows. The white horse. See, the white horse, and I brought it up when we were at the last episode, and a coworker of mine brought it up and said, "What if that white horse was actually Bran?" Yeah, helping her out. And then like, I made working. the joke of it's the Bran Uber. Yeah, he's sending her an Uber. So, but even if it was. What was the point of it? I feel, I feel though you're you're focusing too much. It's just a horse that happened well, to be it there. Like, it look, they like focus on it's, the it's, horse. It's it's a, it's it's a like... symbolic thing for sure. But I think. But what fo- is the symbol for then? Yeah, what is the, the point the of white, it? The white horse could be death. It could be the freedom that she's going to get in that moment. So if it's, if it's any of those things, yeah, she wasn't that far away from that outside wall. Uh, what they she showed though? it. She rode off, and you can see the opening. And she just essentially double backed into King's Landing after that moment. Yeah, but how far? Doesn't matter. She sure it does. She she would have just taken that horse. I out. think you're looking too much into it. Personally, I think you're looking way too much into it. It's a the horse was there as a symbolic thing again for her freedom for the death that happened. The white horse, as they say in certain, is it? Can't remember what Norse or, mythology has it as go. death. A lot of other mythological creatures look there at the go. white horse as death or symbolizing that. Some people symbolize it as free. I, I honestly stuff. feel you're just you guys are looking way too well, into it. I just it. like well, they I'm, set it up. That's why yeah. I was like, well, wondering. But, but again, there's a cool poster that came out of it. <laughs> like, but, but that's the thing, though. Yeah. Okay, hold on. This entire show, Arya has lived by her own code. Sure. Oh, also with Arya, the whole faceless man thing means nothing anymore. Yeah, I thought she was gonna do something like that. Like I was waiting. She for hasn't like, used it since, obviously. Walter Frey in episode at so season that means, seven. Uh, C- yeah. yeah. So uh, again, also that means nothing. I was looking for like a so, big moment. Oh, like that. so that whole but, Sandor okay, thing we talked about last. Nothing? Why does she need to use in those instances? Why do you set her up the whole time to make that important? Stop at like. So for me, it's I don't want the creators to keep throwing out questions and not answering them. That's the that's the Sopranos finale. That's the Sopranos finale where they're sitting in the diner and all of a sudden it fades to it cuts to black and you're like, well, what happened? We don't know. That's the finale. Yeah. So she lives by her own code. Okay. And then Clegane in that moment is the one that can convince her to do it. And the only reason they did it is because they mm-hmm. wanted somebody on the ground floor. Yeah, so true. To the story, 
it did nothing and it betrayed her character, but the guys just wanted somebody on the ground floor to follow. Yeah, we covered that, but we're talking right. about the horse now. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is you just said it makes for a cool poster. That's all it does. I said it made for a cool poster when they had her against the dragon, if you're talking about what that could have potentially led up to. But, right. Yeah. But her getting on the horse and taking, I think it was a minute of her looking at the horse, slowly reaching her hand out to the horse, this whole sequence with the horse, which was, there was time put into that. Okay. Literally meant nothing because the the carnage had stopped. Okay. She was by herself. And she could have just walked out. She didn't need to ride off in the horse. Just see, for me, that seems like the they did that just to have a cool shot. And I feel that a lot of times they did things just to have a cool shot. And it ultimately means nothing. And I'm not looking into it. You've a, because I'm not looking into it too much because they've established that they put that in there for us to sit there and ask the questions. Why are you going to put something in? Mm-hmm that is going to invite somebody to ask a question and then just leave it because she doesn't ride back into it with it. She doesn't go anywhere with it. It she lit, It's like me running to the parkade, grabbing my car, driving it to the sidewalk, and then just leaving it and then coming back into my condo. What was the point of that? You're gonna If you're looking at it from the outside, you're going to be like, what was the point of you doing that? I don't know. Wasn't it cool when I like rode off off that ramp? Because the parkade has a ramp. I get that. I think my main issue with like just season eight was that they set up a lot of things mm-hmm. and they like just didn't have a good continuity. Like with John telling them the secret, yeah. you can actually see it. Like they set up a lot of things. Like they didn't True, show. I agree with that a hundred percent. But I was talking on the horse. You're looking at it way too much. And the, the, the answer you say you ask the question, why is it there for? Well, the simplest answer, it's there. It's it's her escape. She's been running from all the way to the Red Keep to where she got to. She's tired. She wants to ride a horse out of there. <laughs> why not? Because the thing is literally right there. So why let okay. it? Why not? Well, to be fair, all you have to do is this. Episode. No, no, no. <laughs> I understand. So what I'm saying is, if if she just yeah. needed to get the fuck out, yeah, then don't have this slow motion looking at the horse like it's my savior type of moment. She could have just gone onto the horse and gotten the fuck out. If that's the case, why? don't don't that, take. I think time. that would have betrayed it even more. Let no, it be a because, moment. But it's not that moment means nothing. Why are you going to? Sure, let... it is. She just survived another bombardment, and she's just like she's looking around. She's kind of in a daze, and she's yeah. just like she sees this horse as like the solace right now for her. Okay, and she has a moment. Okay, I can get out of here quick. Why she not? Clearly didn't because she... she took her sweet ass time oh rubbing the horse. It was just. I I hundred percent think you're looking way too into it. I'm, That's my I'm, opinion. I'm anyway. thinking you're not looking into it enough, which goes to the entire season. Because again, it's let's make a cool shot. Yeah. Just for the sake of doing a cool shot, that means nothing. Right. Again, if she wanted to get the fuck out, which is what I would do mm-hmm. if I was in that scene. Oh, cool, a horse. I'm jumping the fuck on and I'm going. I'm not going to sit there slowly rubbing it and making it seem like something's going to happen or it means something. Because in cinema, if you focus on it, mm-hmm. that means it means something. Yeah, this it is means just, her. She's just going to escape. No, no, no. If she's going to escape, then escape. Okay. If that horse meant something, if it was a transformative moment for her, then it would have translated into the next episode. Mm-hmm. So in that moment, it meant something. But what I'm saying is the very next episode, it means absolutely nothing. She doesn't ride in on it. It doesn't do anything for her. And she just... Slinks her way through to talk to John and have one second last conversation with him. Okay. So that it, it's in that moment. It was beautiful. It was great. It was a great mm-hmm. shot and everything like that. And I understood the meaning of it then. Mm-hmm. But the very next episode, it meant nothing. And there was a lot of things that were they were doing with it where you did something here. It has to carry over. If it doesn't carry over, then don't focus on it here. Don't focus on Jon Snow for six seven seasons bring him back to life have him reveal his name to two people or have sam reveal it to him he reveals it to danny and then bran reveal it to the siblings and not even show us that reaction Mm -hmm. and then ultimately it means nothing because at that point john's story to me much like the horse means nothing but you focused on it for a real long time and at the end of it it didn't do anything for anybody I'll, just to end this point and sure. agree to disagree, you kind of comparing John's story to just one shot of a horse, 
not a good comparison. No, no, no. You're, 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 no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, as you're just comparing John's entire arc as a, as who he is and what he becomes and what the story begins. And yes, I 100% agree. I wanted to see the actual reaction of the kids rather than the aftermath. And you're comparing it to the scene of the horse. No, which, I'm, I'm talking but, about an overarching issue with the show in okay, general. Okay, I get that, but where you're focusing you on something. To the horse. <laughs> no, 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 I'm comparing it because that's what we were talking about. Okay, don't look at the just the horse. You're just looking at it at face value. I'm looking at it at a thought process. I'm looking at it at the fact that the show has emphasized certain things mm-hmm. to ultimately make it mean nothing. On a very small scale, yeah. this goddamn horse. On a large scale, Jon Snow, okay. one of your main characters. Mm-hmm. You're focusing on the horse and just looking at it as just a horse and Arya going out. No, no, no. You have to look at it, in my opinion, more than that. Yeah, and and more than that as to a, a trend of what they've failed to pay off versus what they've focused on. All right. And that's all I'm going to say on that. So back to my original question. Favorite moments, shots. Tyrion dropping the queen, hand of queen. That was yeah. great. That was my favorite, one of my top favorite, actually. What's your next one? That was that's it. it. Well, that was like my top. I, I just top. knew the top one. I had point. two. Go for it. The second one was the montage of the Starks at the end. Okay. And it was nice. Just and like was with, that? Was it? Sorry, was it just me or was that a green leaf coming out from past the yeah, wall? Okay, yeah. I thought it was. Uh, There's a little bit of green coming out, but like just the montage of like you know, Aya putting her sword in her sheath, and then it, it really cut to John right away. Mm-hmm. The walking, everything between the three main Starks. I don't think there was anything from Bran, was there? I don't think so either. No. He just decided to be like, I'm going to find the dragon. Yeah. First council meeting, I'm fucking off. But those guys on their journeys, doing their thing, was awesome and. I would say one of the best things to come out of this is always the the soundtrack for season eight is amazing. I've listened to it front and back a couple of times, and I'm so glad it happened that Serge Tankian did his uh, audio like a uh, studio version. Is of that Rain. out now? It's yeah, it's oh, out amazing. available. He did a studio version of Reigns of Castamere, and he he initially He's- gave his voice. Uh, concert. When, at the concert, at like the Game of Thrones experience that they did a whole live concert. So Serge Sankin is the lead singer for System of a Down, those that may not know. But he has such an amazing range. And actually, someone asked me the questions like, oh, who's the person at the end? I'm like, it's Serge. He has that range. He started off very nice, the the melody. And then he's he, actually an opera singer before he got into it. Exactly. And if choir, too. To, if you haven't listened to System of a Down, yeah. go back and fucking listen to System of a Down. They are oh, one yeah. of my favorites. They are unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and then he just builds it up from there, and it's just amazing. But uh, so many good tracks on that. Well, th- I would argue that this whole, the, all of Game of Thrones, has in general, the yes, best. Oh yeah, s- original score I've ever heard. Like mm. consistently, just incredible. Mm-hmm. Like I, I keep forgetting that even the Starks theme song is incredible because it's overshadowed by Rain of Castamere. But now I keep listening to the Starks one. And then you go to Light of the Seven and uh, mm-hmm. Bastard. That's one of my favorite ones from uh, the Battle of good. Bastards. Uh, the one that they released on the season eight right now was f- with the one. It was called For Cersei, okay. which was a mashup of Reigns of Castamere and uh, the Light of the Seven. Oh, cool! So it was it was really nice. That was basically the end scene where you know Cersei and Jaime yep. find each other and stuff yep. like that. But it's it's awesome to li- listen to these and how well they did everything and how yeah. But you're right. The the Reigns of Castamere is like as for a house. Uh, theme song kind of thing playing mm. is top notch but the Stark one has a def- different feel to it if you wanted to go that way but yeah definitely worth a, a listen that whole album for season 8 alone if, yeah. if you were to just pick one right now to listen through that one would be amazing yeah um, I really liked uh, the John stare down with Drogon after he was hiding in the snow yeah I'm really curious as to who has to, which crew has to go and put snow back on Drogon because yeah. apparently also they never show that it was snowing at all beforehand uh, before no, like before was the episode ended. Ash? I thought it was like kind of like I, th- I think it might have been a mix for sure. I don't but... know. That's a lot of ash, and there weren't that many people up there to get ashed. It's more on the ground floor. Well, it was more than like just like yeah. mixing the air though. Maybe yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, I will say that I was super super impressed by Amelia Clark's uh, acting when she made her speech. Like she did it both Straight in yeah. the Unsullied, Hitler. and it was she was so good. Like. Mm-hmm. I was getting goosebumps. I was like, this means nothing, but fuck, that is so good. Like, she did such a great job. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. In both those languages, it was so good. She was, yeah, it was outstanding. Yeah. I really wished 
before because for some reason Grey Worm seemed to have like teleported like he was faster than anybody. Yeah. Um, I really wish there was a fight scene between John and Grey Worm where yeah. John kills him right after he kills. Because so the other confusing thing I had was why the fuck did they let Tyrion speak? Yeah. And on top of that, choose uh, elect the new uh, king. Weird. All, like, all of that was weird, 100%. I, I, I thought I missed something where I'm like, wh- why is he speaking right now? Yeah. Because clearly Grey Worm told him not to speak. Yeah. But then he decides to have one more monologue just out of nowhere. Be yeah. like, I'm just going to talk. And if anyone stops me, they'll stop me like Sansa did to her uncle, which was fu- fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I'll say the memes are in a, at 11 for this whole season. If you're to Even rate more so than a, the long night, because long night had some good memes. Oh, th- this one was amazing. Cause like the whole and we thing, they did the pulp fiction side. I don't ask you a like, goddamn, goddamn thing. Like, thing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, perfect. That was good. The, that meme, was really the memes good. have been amazing. The memes, the acting, the soundtrack, all that kind of stuff. And like certain, except, end, certain except end the show. <laughs> well, okay. All, all, uh, except, the, all except the accoutrements. Certain. So, so your appetizer is good. Your sides your, are good. Your, appet- your appetizers are good. Your aperitif is good. Your desserts. I don't even know what dessert. Let's say would be the soundtrack. Yeah. But your actual meal is dog shit. Almost at the end of it. I won't say it's dog shit. It's just not where I want it. <laughs> your your chicken came medium rare. I'm sorry. I you don't eat medium rare chicken. <laughs> are you quoting something? I have no yeah, idea. Just, no. Making up shit. You worked in a food yeah. service industry. Yeah. Mm. Anthony, do you have anything? You've been very quiet. Well, letting just, us get I our shit my, off. I wouldn't first. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. We kind of hijacked it from there. Yeah. Um, the show is yeah. still going to go down as one of the greatest shows ever. And anybody Absolutely. that says otherwise, I disagree with them. Yeah. Um, I definitely disagree with them. Yeah. I'm looking <laughs> so forward. So just messaged me. Hey, how come I can't find the live show? Um, long story. Um, it was inevitable. Yeah. Oh, this day but, takes a heavy right. toll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the spinoff series should be interesting because George Armand's at the helm of it all. And uh, with another, I can't remember who else is part of it. But yeah, it'll basically, it should be interesting. Apparently, it's set to release in 2020. What is, sorry? The well, first, they're filming in February. They're right? filming already now. Uh, the, they're already filming? The, spin-off, the first spinoff Jesus. has been greenlit. So initially, they had five prequels. Sorry, not spinoffs, prequels. Prequels. Prequels to be specific. They got five ideas out i think only three have got greenlit at the moment and then they're starting way back five thousand years before the events of game of thrones and i think like valeria no so they're gonna get into the aegon the conqueror and the the fall the doom of valeria and that kind of stuff so that so here here's where i think that that one would be a very interesting because we've heard about it there's tons of information on it (laughs) Mm mm-hmm uh, so they have lots to go off of. So it's not a matter of, you know, you're going to lose certain material along the way and have to make shit up as you go, uh, whoever it may be. But hopefully this Aegon actually means something. Yeah. Oh, well, clearly because he forged the Iron Throne. Uh, oh, yeah. That's right. So like basically a season could be them, the Doom of Valyria, and then them coming to Westeros and then they could have a whole other run of just the Conqueror doing what he's doing. Kind the of Doom thing. of Valyria. Yeah. So lots to go off of there, and we'll see. I don't know what the other one could potentially be. I, thought it had I don't to do think something there's with the kids of the forest or the children of the forest. That's the one that's coming. Oh, that is the one. That is the one that's coming. So it's going to coincide with the Aegon one, or is the yeah, Aegon it's, one it's, separate? Or? Basically, it's like the age of heroes. So, and it'll the thing the is age of heroes. Yeah, that's it. Sounds like a fucking Avengers. That's title. a little much. Yeah. No, it's it's not a title. It's just basically they're quoting it. It's basically the age of heroes that you hear about, like the well, they wouldn't the original, the, like Brandon Stark, the original one, Brandon the Builder, that kind of stuff. The age of Brandon the oh, Builder. Yeah. <laughs> one show I'm excited for, mm. not Game of Thrones related, Watchmen. Oh yeah, that I trailer looks great. Holy the fuck. trailer does look good. I hated. The movie? I, I actually hated the movie. One you the didn't few. like the movie. I did not I like the movie. It, through, it was like, so long. And boring. Have you read it? It's like right up there. The Watchmen. We, we have the. I have the Watchmen. Uh, yeah. No, I found it very long and boring. And it was, was long. Like, so and is it the was, show a sequel to the movie? Like, I'm not sure. I'm I think it's sure. a reboot. Okay. As they should, because it wasn't well received. The show was long. Um, it had some really great parts in it from the uh, graphic novel, which I've read. Um, one of the few, and. So I liked it from that perspective, mm-hmm. but it was definitely boring. There was definitely some stuff in there that they could have take out, taken out. It was, uh, but I don't know. There was, I liked it like 60%. I, I'd give it like a six, 65% or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Um, 
visually was stunning. There was uh, like it was very, very close to the graphic novel. I thought the guy that played Rorschach was awesome. Um, yeah, there was a lot of good stuff in there, but I know a lot of people disliked it, but I didn't dislike it as much as some other people. I'm still mm-hmm. giving it a like a 65 percent, which I guess by today's standards, is that still a passing grade? Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of places are 70. 59 is like a fail. 59 is a fail now, hey? Well, that's, that's like okay. on Rotten Tomatoes. That's rotten. Oh, wow. It's only below 60. 59 is a rotten. Mm-hmm. Jesus, rotten tomatoes. Apparently, they uh, changed this thing with rotten tomatoes, too. Yeah. What's the. Isn't that like where they, they took out the um, the fan participation or whatever? Well, no, I, I don't know. Like, from. I read Casual Movie Gore's thing. What I heard is that you have to actually, like, provide proof that mm-hmm. you actually bought a ticket to do that. So I don't know if it's a separate thing. Oh, from Fandango yeah. or something? Yeah. But yeah, no, I watched the Watchmen trailer, and I was like, it's, it looks really gritty, and it just looks, like, interesting, because I've been, like, looking for a new show to watch. I was thinking about Westworld, but I'm not sure. But yeah. I've heard very good things about Westworld. I've heard amazing things about it. Um, oh, so, so this is the, sorry, going really to the front, because I should have pulled this up, and I screenshotted it for a reason. So, Tenet, T-E-N-E-T, is Christopher Nolan's movie. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson's in it, Kenneth Branagh. John David Washington, Robert Pattinson, Elizabeth Debicki, and yeah, so that should be good. Good cast. Um, I'm actually going to watch that one. Um, fuck, I forget what it's called. It starts with a G. It's on um, Netflix. It's a Robert Pattinson uh, movie on there, mm-hmm. and it's one of the ones that the, from that post that you sent me. Yeah. Where you're like, hey, watch these movies to really show that Robert Pattinson can be Batman. Has some range kind of the thing. more the more I've thought about it, the more I'm like, this could be good. Like I'm I'm not we talked about it too. We were you were fine with it, I'm fine with it. I was totally wrong about Heath Ledger, so ever since then I've been just like really? Well, I know for a fact like a lot of people that are hating on him for Twilight never actually fucking saw the movie <laughs> and that was like seven years ago yeah. wasn't it that was See, so I've seen long them. they were just goofy it was just whatever it was just well it, it was it was honestly the 50 shades of its time yeah in its own way but teeny bopper style i would oh, say oh speaking of which not and not 50 shades at all um this petition that's been going around which obviously the writers have called people ungrateful shits Game of Thrones. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the creators have called uh, the fans ungrateful little shits, which really you are. Stop petitioning. You guys are fucking idiots. It's not going to get it. Um, but to that point, the backlash from Sonic made them change Sonic. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that was like also before it was released. That's a very good point, too. That was the, that was my that was a counter honor. I'm glad you brought that up because I was like someone had said uh, on uh, I forget who it was, but they're like, well, they changed Sonic because of the fans. So it's got to be working. I'm like, yeah, but that was a trailer. And that was at a point where they could do it, not when the show's already out. Yeah, they're going to spend millions and millions of dollars to reshoot, bring back all the cast, and redo a bunch of this stuff. Yeah. Real smart. Well, even the cast is saying, like, they're idiots as it is. Like, well, it's yeah, I dis- saw, like, a compilation on YouTube of the yeah. cast members talking about it before it came out, and they just yeah. all seem so disappointed. It's hilarious, yeah. though, because a million people have wasted their time writing their names on this thing. Mm-hmm. like, and it's, and it's not going to mean anything, and it shouldn't, because if... If for some reason HBO decided to be like, no, we're going to reshoot it, I'd be like, you guys are even bigger idiots than the decisions, than the idiotic decisions that were made to season eight of Game you of Thrones. You made the decision, like, stand by it. Like, don't yeah. go back. Especially at this point where it's different, like, for Sonic, because they're at the very beginning stages where they're able to do it, you know, yeah. Yeah. without a big deal. Yeah. Game of Thrones, you know, week by week, if they were to stop it halfway through the season, they're not going to finish, like, releasing that. Shit. Well, yeah. and I'll tell you why. If all those million, if a million people got into a room and said, let's write the final season of Game of Thrones, nothing would get done ever. Yeah. And I blame, I blame a lot of this on George R. R. Martin. How long has it been since that last book has come out? Years. And he's done how many projects since then? And not only that, I've seen a few interviews with him where he keeps bitching about the fact that J.K. Rowling won an award over him. And it's like, listen, fucker. Stop bitching about J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter and just finish your fucking book. Pretty people much. love it. Enjoy the fact that people love it. The yeah. show based off your book is more beloved now. Th- no, I wouldn't say more beloved than Harry Potter, but yeah. it's as beloved, let's say, because people fucking love Game of Thrones. Yeah. A lot of people love Harry Potter and they love Game of Thrones. Let's say it's equal. Yeah. And I was talking to Herc about this and I'm like, listen, if someone gave me six years, let's say they gave me... Yeah, if they gave me six years to write a book, mm-hmm. I could probably write a book. 
it wouldn't be very good, but I'd be able to fucking finish a book. Yeah. And he gave them the notes for it. My guess is in his book, Bran is the Night King and just things end up being better. Like the payoff is better. That things are stretched out like they are yeah. in books and stuff. So the thing is, he's come out to say that he had like his book kind of ends the same, kind of not. Some stuff's the same, some not. Like it's, it's very back and forth. And you could take that with a grain of salt, but I'm of the mind that it's not likely that D&D basically went completely off the rails per se. Yeah. I think they interpreted certain events slightly differently, but certain end results are going to be the same. Like I wholeheartedly believe Sansa's queen of the North, mm-hmm. if not queen of all the kingdoms. Uh, I uh, I could see her going off doing her own thing because that's always been her style. And She's in the book, gone. they might continue that. That might be the spinoff in the book. Exactly. And then John going back to the wall or the North. And you, you know what? Fair enough. One thing we forgot to mention, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. At least they gave Ghost. That's true. Just do. Yeah. He yes. actually fucking touched the fucking poor bastard. Yeah. Bastard touching the bastard. His fucking ear is gone. Yeah. Hug him. Do you guys think that George R. R. Martin was waiting to see how fans perceived the ending of the show before he actually... I'll tell you what, he... Really he funny. he, he, has, he has always said that it's never influenced his writing. And I, I'm going to believe that because the guy, he's created what he's created for a reason. I don't believe he'd be influenced by this. Now, the other thing I have heard, though, to on the show side is that uh, leaks came out very early on in season six, I think, or seven, seven, sorry, seven yeah. uh, of what the end result was going to be or whatever. And I think they actually did change stuff. Okay. Now that's, that's rumor. Uh, no, someone but, told me the leak. So Thanos was telling me, we have a friend named Thanos, by the way. I don't yeah. think we've ever that's mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. He told me what was originally supposed to happen. Yeah. And I'm super pissed off because that means they went out of their way to, to not do that yeah. show when it's like, I just want to fucking. How many people yeah. have read Harry Potter before they watch the movie? I have. Nope. Okay, I read books one to four. Mm-hmm. I know what happens. Yeah. I know everything that happened, and I still wanted to see the movie, mm-hmm. and I just wanted to see these things. Yeah. Happen in my in in real like I wanted to see them. Yep. I can picture them in my mind. It was amazing when I read them. I want to see them. And that's what bothers me so much. How many people have read these things and they're like, I just want to see it on screen. Yeah. I want it imagined so what on was the, the screen. supposed to be? Something to do with like uh, him riding off or the him being blo- like there, there was there was more involvement with him being Aegon Targaryen, more yeah. Daenerys things. There was more dragon stuff like he just ran it through quickly. I'd have to go back and like actually talk to him and have a breakdown. But it was awesome. It was very good. Yeah. And I'm like, that sucks because yeah. they had it. Yeah. Just show it. Well, like I said, certain end results I'm I'm happy and I'm okay with. Daenerys going crazy, perfect. I'm perfectly fine with that. Her dying by John. Perfect. I'm, I'm fine with that too. For me though, it's rushed. The other it's, stuff. It's the whole the theme. Image, yeah. It's it's the lead up up yeah. to it. Like I said. Yeah. I'm happy with the destination, the journey. He tripped up a few times. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? So but what's more important, the journey or the destination? Eh, 50-50. No, just That's joking. not what most people say. I know. Um, do we have anything else? I'm just being difficult. I'm done my so. scotch. Do you have anything I'm else? I'm done my scotch too. Um, scotch is done. The show's done. Scotch is done. The show's done. Cool. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you, yeah. everybody, for listening. Oh. Oh, sorry. Sorry, one more thing. There is going to be a two-hour documentary this Sunday. Oh, is that the I HBO think, behind the scenes thing or whatever? I think it'll be like, so basically they didn't do uh, the, the the game revealed kind of thing like mm-hmm. they have done on YouTube but they're doing this two-hour thing that'll be released on uh, this Sunday instead. So it should be interesting. But I won't be able to see it, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to try to keep you guys updated on the Entertain Facts page. If not, we'll try to maybe do some live shows through the F4 podcast. I don't know if you can reach the people that are... You can't reach anybody from... Nope. I think the yeah. only person I can reach is like Arturo. Well, I feel like most of the devoted fans anyway followed the podcast page. Yeah, hopefully they'll come. Um, over. Yeah, hopefully they do. And um, so, yeah, if we get back and doing live shows, then we'll do it on one of those one of the platforms or Facebook or something like that. Um, I don't know how many of them also follow the Facebook page. But anyways, so, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, it's super shitty. Mm-hmm. Still super, super shitty because it's a lot of work down the tubes for no reason. Um, I feel no reason. And um, clearly YouTube has other or not YouTube. Instagram. Instagram has mm-hmm. other things to say about that. I don't know what the fuck's going on with my phone. There we go. Okay. So that's it. That's our show. 
Uh, next week, I'm going to tr- see if uh, I might put something together. I might not. It might even be just a free week. We'll see. Um, but uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, from wherever you're listening to, uh, the, I finally have our podcast outlets here. You can always catch us on Anchor, Stitcher Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Podbean, Radio Public, and YouTube. Those are all the publications that you can find us. And if you're listening to us from any of those, thank you so much. If you're able to drop, I don't know if it's a like or if it's a star rating or even a comment or anything like that on any of those places that you're listening to, that'd be very much appreciated. If you don't feel like it, then you don't feel like it. It's all good. Thank you for tuning in for another week of the F Word Podcast. I'm G. It's your boy, Facts. No, fuck big. I messed it up. I, ruined, I took away the one <laughs> part. Of fuck it. big. <laughs> fuck big. Vast. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs>